here we have a car going into a circular curve. So it should be pretty clear that we're talking about circular motion. And you might be familiar with uniform circular motion, right? Where you have a particle that travels in a circle, right? At a particular time, it's got a velocity like that. And the speed stays the same and you're just changing direction. So then the only acceleration is this, what we call the centripetal acceleration, where centripetal acceleration, the size of it anyways, is V squared over R. Right, it always points to the center. That's why we call it centripetal. But in this case, we're told that the speed of the car is decreasing. So we no longer have uniform circular motion. So we have non-uniform circular motion. And in these cases, it's actually most easy to talk about what's going on still by keeping the centripetal part, but also introducing an additional component that is changing the speed. But because the direction of all these things are changing all the time, using a fixed XY coordinate system is really not gonna be very helpful here. Instead, we're gonna define a corner system that kind of moves with the particle as it goes around. So it's not a fixed corner system, it rotates. So in terms of deriving things, it's uh, a little more complicated, complicated, but we are going to make use of existing results to sidestep that so that you can save it for your second year course. What we're going to define is we're still going to define a radial direction and that's going to take the centripetal bit. We define it positive inwards because we know that's what the acceleration tends to do. And we denote it using r hat, the unit vector. Additionally, we define another component called the tangential component, right? It's tangent to the circle and it basically goes in the direction of the velocity. So let's write that out proper. We have r hat and t hat, where r hat is the radial direction and is positive towards the center of the circle. And then we have t hat, not time, but the tangential direction. And it is at all times positive in the direction of the velocity, even as the velocity changes as it goes around the circle. In the sense that if you have a positive acceleration, then your speed would be increasing because it will be in the same direction as your velocity. Breaking it down this way, it's a lot more convenient because now your total acceleration vector is gonna have a radial component in the r hat direction plus some tangential component in the t hat direction. The radial component is exclusively responsible for changing the direction of your particle, because it's always, as circle theory goes, perpendicular to your velocity, which is tangent to the side of the circle. So it doesn't change the speed, it just changes the direction. And all the speed changing, all the magnitude changing is dealt with using the tangential part. So we already know that the radial direction points to the center circle positive centripetal acceleration, V squared over R. And the tangential bit is how fast your speed is changing over time. So our job now is to find each of these components using these known results and then combining them together using Pythagoras. Before we get a much further though, they're a little bit sneaky because we expect in the end the units of meters per second square, but they're quoting everything to us in kilometers per hour. So let's change everything to meters per second first. And this you've done a bunch of times where we're multiplying by factors of one, getting rid of that kilometer and getting rid of that hour, 60 times 60, that's 25 meters per second. That gets you 16.667. And then you also have the speed of the car is decreasing at the rate of that much per second. So this is a little bit of a funky thing here. It should be negative because you're decreasing in speed. You're decreasing nine kilometers per hour every second. So that's a per second in there. So they change into meter per second square. We only have to do one hour to one second and then it it will combine with the other second to give us meters per second square. 
right? Because that cancels the hour, that cancels the kilometer, you still have two seconds underneath. As it turns out, that's negative 2.5. So now that everything is in meters per second, we can work out the radial bit component. And they're specifically referring to the time when the speed is exactly this much. So it doesn't matter if it started at 90, it's at this particular instant, what is the speed? Square divided by the radius, which is 150 meter, nice and big. And you will notice that given this form, you have meter square per second square on top, divided by meter, you do end up with meter per second square. It's a good check in case, I don't know, you couldn't quite remember the form of b square over r and you put, you're put, you wondering if you put the square on top or underneath, right? Um, units will help you sort that stuff out. Lots of digits. The tangential bit is just the change in speed over time, which is as given the negative 2.5 meters per second square. This negative here is very important because we're talking about a slowdown. Because we're slowing down, the acceleration must be opposite to your velocity, therefore must be also opposite to your t hat vector direction. Then putting them as a package, there we go. Now they specifically want the magnitude then. Um, even though the radial and the tangential direction changes all the time, at any given time, the radial direction and the tangential direction, in this case pointing, say, that way, are both mutually perpendicular to each other. So then we can still use Pythagoras to get the overall magnitude. giving us 3.1 meters per second square. So just an example of these non-uniform circular motion and how if we use radial and tangential components, it makes the problem actually doable.